name is Shannon Sims, and today we're going to um, work up to different poses that are going to help focus us up and get us ready for um, eight angle pose, Ashta Vakrasana. So Ashta Vakrasana is a really fun pose, um, and we're just going to work up to a couple of different things that are going to get us ready for that. So. I'm going to ask you if you have blocks to, to get some blocks out. And we're just going to take the blocks to the side for a little bit. Um, and I'm going to have you start off in just a seated pose. Now you might start off in a seated pose like I am, or you might start off in a cross-legged pose, kind of. Alright, so just bring the head down and taking a moment, allowing the shoulders to relax. Maybe the forehead is pressing down. And just moving a little side to side. And just starting to draw awareness to how you're feeling. Notice if there's any area that you are holding tension or tightness. Allowing the hips to relax, the shoulders, the fingers, even the jaw. Feeling your body, feeling your breath. And being aware of what's going on internally. And just staying, maybe the head is down, the eyes are closed. Start finding a soft, ujjayi breath. Feeling your breath in through your nose, out through your nose. And notice how in this kind of ball shape that you're in, where your abdomen might be a little constricted, that there is a little bit more force in your breath to keep the breath flowing. Now, where we start coming into strenuous poses, I want you to think about keeping that breath, not holding the breath. And that's where a lot of times we struggle in yoga is when we know we're in a pose that's such a challenge. We hold our breath and it actually kind of zaps our strength because that flow of oxygen in and out of our body is going to actually give us more lift, more height. So just drawing awareness to keeping this nice in and out flow, and it doesn't have to be really noisy. Sometimes with power yoga, we have a tendency to feel that we need to breathe really strenuously, really hard. Um, you know, like that Ashtanga Ujjayi breath, and you can do a soft breath. Actually, a lot of times if we're breathing so hard, it zaps a lot of the strength that we might have for other poses. So just being aware of how much energy you're putting into your breath rather than the poses and keeping and harnessing some of this breath inwardly. Now start to extend your fingers forward and just stretching into your arms. If you're on your knees like I am, I want you to walk your knees back and maybe start to lift your tailbone up a little bit. Stretching through the arms, the shoulders. Notice how the shoulders feel, spread the fingers out. Maybe drop the forearms down. Pull the shoulder blades back and kind of squeeze the shoulder blades together towards the center. Open the chest up a little bit, pull the chest through the arms, and then extend the arms a little straighter. And just see what's going on with the shoulders. Let's extend the arms forward, and I want you to start to walk the fingers forward a little bit. Now maybe pressing the chest down, coming into this variation of melting heart. I'm going to keep my fingers towards the tip of my mat. Keep your tailbone reaching back, keep your heart reaching forward. And then tuck your tailbone just a little bit so you can start to lift up, pull your pelvis forward, keep your arms a little straighter, and hug that bottom rib in towards the top rib and allow the hips to come down, keeping the arms straight, draw the shoulders back, and lift the heart, lift the chest. And if this is too much for your back, bring your forearms down. If not, stay with this and just take a moment and move your shoulders a little 
side to side. Notice how the back is feeling. Maybe rolling the shoulders a little bit, and even going the other direction. Reach and extend the elbows down. Take the heart forward, and then bring your hands back so your arms are at about 90 degrees. Pull your shoulder blades down towards the ground, and then roll the shoulder blades back so you can feel the difference. Plug into the top of the feet, and then just inhale, lift the chest. As you lift the chest, lift the back of the legs. So just the knees come up. Lift the heart a little bit more. Lift the back of the knees up off the ground, staying here for five, four, and squeeze into the inside of the thighs. Three, two, and one. Lowering down, push up. Keep the knees on the ground, pushing up into this plank pose, and then lift the knees up, coming into full plank variation. Draw and hug the belly in towards the spine, and just rock a little forward and back. Now, if you haven't done anything on the wrist, this is too much for the wrist, bring the knees down. If not, see if you can move into little circles, kind of rotating into the wrist. Keep the spine strong, keep the legs super active. And then I'm going to lift the shoulder blades up a little bit more. Reach yourself forward, see if you can rise up onto the tips of the toes, press back. Reach forward, shoulders over the fingertips, and lightly hug the fingertips towards the mat. Press back one more like that. Activate the belly and then press yourself in downward facing dog. And just move your knees a little bit side to side, spread your fingers out, draw your belly button in towards your spine, pedal at your feet. Let's bring both heels over towards the right side. Make sure your feet are a little separated, start to bend your knees. Let's rise up onto the right toes, push into the left hip and lift the left ribs up towards the sky. Tip the fingers on the left and walk the fingers forward as far as you can. When you're ready, press the left hand down, straighten out the right leg, and see if you push yourself forward a little bit more, rising up onto the left toes. Strong right arm, hugging and really rounding into the right side of obliques. Tend the fingers on the left. If this is okay, maybe even lift the hand and extend over and get that deeper stretch. We're going to bring the left hand down, heels come back to the center. Find your downward facing dog. On your inhale, ripple forward, chin in towards your chest, and make this really slow. Press yourself into plank, shoulders reaching towards fingertips, and then tilt your tailbone up towards the ceiling, slight bend in the knees, draw yourself back, straighten out the arms. Ripple forward, chin in towards chest, pull yourself forward, shoulders over fingertips, Tilt the tailbone, bend the knees, reaching yourself back, downward dog. Bring the heels this time over towards the left side. Reach your rib cage up towards the right and bend your knees generously. I'm going to rise up this time onto the left toes. Right fingertips might reach over towards the right corner of your mat. And lift your ribs as high as you can, getting a really nice stretch on your right side. Then bend your right knee, rise up onto your right toes, and see if you can start straightening out the left. Push into the left big toe, and maybe start to shift some weight so the shoulder is coming towards the wrist. Now I'm going to extend, see if you can reach the right arm forward, keep lifting, and really hug into the obliques on the left side. When you're ready, plant the right hand down, coming back to the center, rebound here for one breath. Inhale through your nose. Exhale, side out. Chin in towards chest. Inhale, reach and extend forward. Find that high plank pose. Shoulders over fingertips. Lift up a little bit. Hug the belly button in. Slowly lower down. Shoulders are square. Uncurl your toes. Pull your hips forward. Micro bend the elbows and really firm up the legs, pushing the hips through. Chin in towards the chest. So you can bend the knees a little bit. Send the tailbone back and flip the feet over one at a time. And so I'm going to play with that. Everyone's going to look a little different. You want to try to find this kind of fluid action with the back, with the body. So chin in towards the chest. We're going to do that one more time. Shift and ripple forward, find that high plank. Belly button in towards the spine. Shoulders reaching forward. So you can extend forward a little bit more. Start to bend to the elbows, lower down halfway. Uncurl the toes, bend the elbows, micro bend the elbows, 
as you squeeze the shoulder blades back, almost like somebody's grabbing your shoulders, lift your heart and then bend your knees, tilt your tailbone back and glide back into your downward facing dog. I'm going to reach and extend the right leg up. Keep the right leg straight. So just reach the toes back behind you. Micro bend to the left knee. Push into the left heel and see if you can lift the left toes. Keep extending like somebody's pulling on your right big toe. Getting extension and length through the body. Right knee is going to bring in towards the nose. Round your spine. Press up through the hands. Curl into the body. And then inhale, extend the leg back. Find two more like that. So exhale, round, back body pulls back. Inhale, find length in the leg. Exhale, back body pulls back. Inhale, find length. And then open your hip and keep your shoulders square. Press a little bit more weight into the right hand, but lift the right knee up a little higher if you can. Start to flex the right foot. Pull your toes towards your shin on the right side and keep your shoulders reaching square towards the ground. You're going to bring the knee over towards the right tricep. So start to extend and bring the knee over towards the right tricep. Keep the leg up high. And then inhale, bring the leg right back up where it was. Exhale, reaching over towards the right tricep. Inhale, extending back. Flex. Last time, reaching forward, rising up high onto the left toes. Let's step the right foot to the outside of the pinky. Finding a low lunge. Left knee comes down, left hand stays down. Reach and extend to the right arm up. Pull your left shoulder back towards the back of your spine and then gaze up. Find opening. See if you can keep extending that right arm back, maybe grabbing onto the back right leg. If it's there, grab it. If it's not, don't worry about it. You can pull the heel in towards the bottom. Lift up a little bit more and you can pull your bottom towards your heel. Keep your left shoulder reaching back behind you. When you're ready, right arm's going to spiral all the way forward. Round the back a little bit. See if you can lift the left leg and then lift the left or right foot and hover. Press and back. Find your downward or three legged dog. Bring your knee in towards your nose. Round your spine. Press up through the arms. Lightly step between your thumbs. Left knee comes down. Keep the hands where they are. Lift the heart, lift the chest. Pull the hip forward, kind of stretching into the psoas, but keep the back engaged. Round the back, hover, and see if the fingers just hover off the mat, but keep the C shape in the belly. On your inhale, lift the heart, and this time reach and extend the arms up. Open the arms out towards the side, find this nice opening. I'm going to keep the arms out, reach and extend, seeing both hands, and turn the palms so they palm space back. If you can, interlock the fingers, right arm on top, squeeze the heart, open the chest, lift the gaze. Pull the shoulder blades down. When you're ready, release the arms back up towards the sky. This time the right hand is going to come down. Now reach and extend your left arm back. And we're going to see, can I grab onto that back left leg? If you can, pull it in, stretching the quad. When you're ready, release, left hand comes down. Bring both hands down, round the back, C-shape the body, take the left knee off the ground. Right heel is going to lift, hover, and then send it back, three like a dog. Right knee comes over towards the left tricep, exhale, nice little twist. Inhale, extend, bring it high, maybe the left heel comes down. Take it over towards the left tricep. Inhale, extend the leg back. And one more time. And we're going to keep it here over to the left and then extend and shoot that right leg out. Right arch is down. Find your fallen triangle. Left heel is down. Reach and extend the left arm up. And just stay here for a breath. Reach the left arm forward. Extend. Take the left hand down. Try to see can I lift that right leg up. Bend the knee. Send it back towards the sky. Take the right foot all the way down, chin in towards your chest, rippling forward, finding high plank. Lowering down, Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing, strong legs, pull the heart forward. Exhale, downward facing, maybe doing that little tuck of the tailbone, bending the knees. So just finding this variation. Stay here for a breath. Inhale through the nose. Exhale, side it out. All right, left leg lifts. Keep the right heel down and keep reaching the left toes back, finding the length. Keep extending, square the shoulders. Lift up as high as you can. See if you can get the left 
toe is reaching up just a little bit more. Rising up high on the right toes, bring that left knee in towards your nose, round your spine, pull your back body back. Inhale, extend the right leg up. Exhale, round. Inhale, extend. Last one. Exhale, round. Inhale. I'm going to keep extending, reaching that knee forward, push up through the shoulders, and then bring and extend to the left foot down. Bring that right, I'm sorry, right knee down. Inhale, reach and extend the arms up. So let's lift up, open the heart, open the chest. Exhale, take the hands down. Round to the shoulders a little bit. Lift the fingers and pull the belly in. Reach the shoulders back. See so you can place the hands down. Reach the chest forward and uncurl the back right toes. We're going to come up. So I'm going to keep and extend to the right arm up and use the left hand. Inhale, lift up. Find that twisted variation. Maybe gazing to the outside of the thumb and pull the right shoulder back, back into its socket. See if you can keep extending the left leg back, or left arm back, and find the right foot. If you can, flex the heel, pull it in towards the bottom, and then shift some of the weight forward. Open the heart, open the chest. Keep that right arm right underneath the shoulder, and keep the shoulder blade pulling back. Release the left arm forward. Round the back a little bit. Straighten out that right knee, and see if you can lift the heel up. Inhale, extend, send it wide. Left knee comes over towards the left tricep. Keep it up pretty high. Inhale, open the hip and extend the hip up as high as you can. Now see if you can push that left heel down, or right heel down, and lift the left knee up a little bit more, but square the shoulders over the mat. Flex the left foot. Keep that left hip reaching up really high, but notice that the shoulders are right over the mat and they're staying in this plane of position. Rise up high onto the right toes. You're going to bring the left knee over towards the left shoulder. On your inhale, extend, open the hip, but don't open the shoulders. Bring that left knee over towards the left shoulder. Inhale, extend, bring the hip back up. Exhale, reaching it over towards the shoulder. We're going to step the foot so it comes right to the outside of the pinky. Right knee comes down, right hand stays down. Inhale, extend, reach the arm up. Pull the right shoulder back. Reach back, find the foot. Gazing up, open your heart, open your chest. Maybe flexing the heel, pulling that heel in a little bit. When you're ready, taking the hand down. I'm going to straighten out the back right leg, round the shoulders a little bit. See if you lift the left foot and then send it back behind you. Bring that left knee over towards the right side, little twist. Inhale, extend, bring it back. Exhale, squeeze in, offer that little twist. Inhale, extend, send it back. Last one. Hold it here, staying there for a moment, and then straightening out the left leg. Take it to the outer left arch, left hand stays down. Roll onto your right heel and extend the right arm up, follow triangle. Keep the hips lifted. So the right hip is lifting up, but it takes the strength of this left hip to reach it up. Reach the right arm around. Take the right hand down, and if you can, lift the left leg. Bring it back into the chest and send it back to the sky. Think about taking the left foot down. Breathe in through your nose. Out through your mouth. Ripple forward, chin in towards the chest. Find your plank pose. Lower down for three. And two. And one. Uncurl your toes. Bend your elbows. Lift your heart. Lift your chest. Pull your shoulder blades back. We're going to come back into Chaturanga. Press it up to plank. Draw it back into your downward facing dog. We're going to do that one more time. So chin in towards chest, undulate, and ripple the spine forward. Pull the shoulders forward as much as you can. So the head is reaching towards the fingertips. Bend your elbows, lower down for three. Two, and one. Inhale, pull your heart through. Keep the elbows micro bent. Lift the heart, lift the 
chest, pull the shoulders back. Come back into your chaturanga, hold three, two, one, press up to plank, downward facing dog, nice job. Stay here for a few breaths. And so just start to check in how your body feels, spreading the fingers out, pushing the tailbone back, maybe the heels are down or maybe taking your stance out a little bit wider. So we need to have really strong arms to come into our eight angle pose. We need to keep our hips pretty open. So that right leg is going to come up, right knee towards nose. Round your spine, step lightly between your thumbs. I'm going to come up high lunge. So reach and extend the arms up. Open the heart, open the chest, and bring yourself out into cactus pose. I'm going to extend the arms out. So spread your fingers out a little bit. And while you're here, just rotate the ankle or rotate the wrists. But keep the back left ankle reaching over so it's open the toes. This is going to keep the power of the position as I'm here. Now reach the arms up. Right arm is going to come down. Left arm is going to reach up. Find a little side stretch. So stretching that left arm up and finding this movement. Keep the legs squeezing in towards one another. And right knee is reaching forward. Inhale. Reach the arms back. Bring the hands down to the heart, open to warrior two. So the back leg is going to come out. Fidget as you need to to come into it, but you want to turn your ribs so your ribs are reaching the long edge. Keep gazing forward and find a little movement in your warrior two. So you see if you can get down a little lower, maybe moving that back leg out and extending so the arch is reaching down. We're going to reach the right arm forward, flip the hand up. Now I'm going to take the right hand right between the legs. So I'm going to take it down towards the mat. Start to straighten out the right leg, bend to the left, and reach your fingers back towards the back of the mat. Slowly extend forward. Make sure your toes come back forward. Reach up, find exalted pose, then generously into the right knee. So take it down, right knee comes down. Inhale, reach back. Shifting yourself forward, exhale. Inhale, reaching up. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, extend. Shift yourself through. Reaching that arm up and coming down. Right arm is going to come right to the inside. Knee is facing forward. Toes are facing forward. And hug the right knee right in towards your shoulder. Reach and extend the left arm up. You want to make sure I'm in the frame. So if you can, we're going to sweep this arm around. I want you to just rotate. Take the hand down and forward. See how it feels for the shoulder. And push the left shoulder so it comes right over the ear. So the body of the arm is right over the ear. And hug the right shoulder and the right knee in towards one another. So hugging your knee in. Actually push your right knee into the back of your right shoulder if you can. If you need to use a block for this, you can. Stay here for and two, and one. Use the left hand slowly. Pull yourself back into your warrior two. Straighten out your right leg. Turn your toes. So we're going to bring the toes in towards the long edge. Bring it in a little bit. Heel, toe, hands come to the hips. Lift and open the heart and exhale, fold. Fine. External rotation of the thighs by the inside of the thighs pressing out. Hands might come down to the outsides of the ankles. If your head is almost about to scrape down like me. Just keep moving the feet in a little bit until you find a place where you can get. Now on this first one, I just want you to think about pulling the shoulder blades back, drawing the belly button in, and see if you can pull yourself through a little bit more. If you need to bend the knees, bend the knees, but point the knees towards the uh, second toe as much as you can. So pull the thighs out a little bit. And as you're here, push through the heels and see if you can start pulling the rib cage through. You might even gaze up towards the ceiling, keeping the chin slightly tucked in towards the chest. On your next inhalation, reach yourself forward, extend your arms long. I'm going to take it into the left foot. So I'm going to walk that left foot out, find Skandasana. So pressing in, right toes come up. Open the arms and see if you can bring that left arm right in front. Right arm is going to come up a little higher. Maybe find a bind here for a moment if that feels good. Opening the shoulders, opening the heart. And when you're ready, take and extend yourself up. If you can, push yourself back into your warrior two. Cartwheel them forward. Right hand down, left hand follows, rotate. 
Round the back, hug the belly in. So you lift the foot, send it back. If you have three-legged practice, feel free to wriggle forward into that. Keep and extend the leg up super strong. Shoulders reach over the fingers. Lower down your chaturanga. Inhale. Micro bend the elbows upward facing. Find your variation, pressing back into your downward facing dog. Left leg comes up on the inhale. Knee towards nose, round your spine, try to touch the knee to the nose, and then lightly step the foot through. Inhale, reach and extend the arms up. Press the shoulders down and rise up high onto the back of the right heel. So the right heel is right over the toes, and see if you can sink the hips down, maybe even nudge the foot back a little bit. Reach and extend the arms out, and bring the arms out a little bit wider, and again, you want to roll out the wrist. This is always a great opportunity, maybe this time making a fist, and rolling both directions. When you're ready, arms extend up. I'm going to leave this right arm up, reaching long through the right side body, and compressing and shortening the left just a little bit. Squeeze the inner thighs and try to keep the hips along the same plane. So I'm going to keep reaching this right arm up. Stay here. Three. And two. And one. Inhale. Reach and extend the arms up. Drop the shoulders a little bit. Let's cactus it out. And then open into your warrior two. Take your hands out if you need to. Move that back leg out. Drop down into it a little bit more. And find those little micro movements in this. Make sure your ribs are facing over towards the long edge. And your knee is tracking over that second toe. I'm going to reach forward, flip the palm, and exalt your pose. Lift your heart and pull your shoulder down. Left arm is going to reach down right towards the center of the mat. And I'm going to start to come into what looks like a skandhasana. Point the left toes and reach your right hand beyond your mat. On your inhale, keep your toes reaching forward. Exalt your pose. Exhale. Let's pull it back. Inhale, extend, reaching up and forward. And then exhale, last time, pressing back. Inhale, coming up, exalting your pose, bringing your hip so your hips are squared a little bit more over towards the long edge. And then extend the left arm, reaching it down to the inside of the left leg. If you can, snuggle your left knee so it's right in towards your left shoulder. And then open up. See how that feels for the shoulders. Keep the shoulders stacked at first and push into your outer right arch. If that's comfortable and you can extend the arm, reach the right arm down and take it around. So opening and pressing that right shoulder back a little bit more. Keep extending the right foot so the right foot is reaching out. Find this opening in this space in the leg. So this is going to give us a great stretch to come into our eight angle pose. Stay here for enough breath. Hug the left knee in towards the shoulders. You're pushing the shoulder actually in towards the knee. So I'm really opening my side body. Using the right arm on your inhale, find your warrior two. Straighten out your leg, turn your toes, and bring your feet in just a little bit more. This time, take your hands to your hips. Inhale, lift your heart, and exhale. Try to extend the insides of the thighs out and pull your heart down. Keep your elbows reaching up. Now as you're here, squeeze your inner thighs towards each other. Squeeze the shins. Lift the arches and keep pulling the chin down. Keep squeezing into the legs and pull your belly button through the legs, staying here for five. So using a lot of core strength. Four, three, two, and one. Inhale, take the hands down. Walk the right foot out. Find Skandasana, pointing the left toes. Reach the arms out, opening the arms. Take them out a little bit wider. Maybe that right shoulder is in front. And if this right heel is lifted, that's okay. If you have a binding practice, feel free to bind. If you're up on the heel, it makes it a little more challenging. So use your own discretion. When you're ready, you're going to reach and extend the arms out. I'm going to slowly start to extend myself back, point my toes. Lower your left arm down and your right, rotate frame, 
Lift up for the shoulders. See if you can lift the left leg. Send it back towards the sky. Shift yourself forward. Maybe finding that three-legged downward or plank. <laughs> Lower down for Chaturanga. Inhale. Upward facing, micro bend the elbows. Bend your knees. Send yourself back to child's pose. Walk the fingers forward, tent the wrists. So getting some heat in the body, moving your body a little side to side. Ground yourself up. We're going to find Lodasana. So Lodasana is going to engage our core a little bit. And I'm going to grab onto my blocks. Now, as I do my Lodasana, I want you to try to keep your right, um, both knees are going to lift up, and I'm going to keep my right toes down. So you're going to take your blocks a little bit back towards the hips, and you're going to round your back a little bit. Now, if you want, the hands can be framed, or you can have your hands coming down, thumbs off the blocks. On your inhale, lift up and think about pushing up and pull your knees towards you. See if you can lift your left leg. Stay here for five, four, three, two, and one. Lowering down, bringing the knees down. And just stay here for a moment, palms up, close your eyes. Inhale through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. So just finding those clearing moments. I'm going to take the blocks back down, and I'm going to do this a few times. We're going to go slow on this first one, and then we're going to do a couple of cycles of these where we're going a little faster. So the hands come down, and I'm going to have you around. So hollow out the belly a little bit as you do this. Pull the navel in. Take the hands down. On your inhale, lift up. Squeeze the knees as high as you can, and this time try to push the right heel in. Stay here for five, four, three, two, and one. Lower down. Nice. So roll out your shoulders for a moment. Other direction. Now you have a choice to use your blocks or not use your blocks. And so if you choose not to use your blocks, your hands are still going to look the same way. I'm going to take it this way. So your hands are still going to be in the same place then. We're going to bring the knees in towards our chest. We're going to do a count of five. I'm going to lift that left heel first. So one, two, three. Inhale, knees come in, lift the left, five, four, three, two, and one. Lower down. Nice job. All right, other side. So bring your hands down close towards the hips. Round your back a little bit. Start to pull your belly button in. One, two, three. Let's inhale, knees in. And this time the right heel comes up for five. Four, three, two, and one. Lowering down. I know Penda Pose is really a challenging pose. This time we're going to try to hold it in. Feet come in. We're going to do two cycles of these. This first one I'm going to use the blocks, and the next one we're going to try not to use the blocks. So bring the blocks right towards the thighs, right before you get to the hip bones. Round your back a little bit. We're going to come up one. Two, three, let's inhale, lift the heels up, stay here for five. Keep pulling the knees in. Four, three, two, and one. Lower down. All right. So trying it without the blocks, a little bit more challenging. Taking the hands down, rounding your back a little bit, setting yourself up. Belly comes in. One, two, three, let's lift, holding, pull the knees in. Five, four, keep pulling. Three, little higher, two. And one. Oh, nice job. Extend your legs forward. So extend your legs forward, and I'm going to show you a variation of the eight angle pose that I love. We're going to open the hips, but we're going to work into the chaturanga arms. So when you come into Ashtakrasana, um, there is a little trick. You're kind of wedging your elbow underneath. So a little trick I used to teach my students is taking your legs out in kind of this really wide Bhattakanasana pose. Now I'm going to cross my right ankle over my left. And I'm going to bring my right arm underneath. So my elbow is going to hit right into this. And I'm going to press my arm back. Now I'm going to bring this arm out, but I'm going to hug the arm in by my side. So it's chaturanga arms. I don't want to extend 
the elbow out too wide because then the shoulder doesn't have anything to protect it. Now I'm hugging. And you can see this hugging action of the knee. Otherwise, I'm trying to balance my leg right on top of my arm. It's going to make it really challenging. So my fingers are facing forward. I'm going to move my body back a little bit. So you can see these chaturanga arms. Now this left elbow is hugging in, and I'm going to press myself down. So right now, I'm not lifted up at all. I'm going to squeeze my legs in towards each other. So as I squeeze, it lifts that hip up, and I have to hold myself up. Stay here for five, four, three, two, and one. So that's a great place to play. We're going to do with it on the other side, same thing. So if you're not able to come in from that upward angle, and you're still working on the strength of the upper body, this is a great way. You can even use a block and place a block right in front of your head. That makes it a little easier, and you can use that pressure. I like to find the chaturanga arms first. So find your wider both legs, and I'm gonna take this time the left ankle right on top of the right, and move it right back towards the center of my, my mat. Left elbow is going to come underneath, and the elbow actually hooks under. And remember, you're squeezing that left knee in, so that knee is staying active. The legs are staying active in this, which is why we wanted to do a lot of the leg movements that we did. Hands are going to press down. The hip is moving back, and the elbow is going to pull in. Now I'm going to extend the legs out, I'm going to lean forward, and as I lean forward, start to straighten the legs. As you squeeze the legs, the hips come up, and you're going to stay here for five, four, three, two, and one. Bringing the hip down. Nice. All right. So we're going to come in to um, compass pose. Compass pose is a great way to open your hips a little bit. So extend your legs forward. I'm going to bring that right leg in, and I want you to grab onto your foot. And as, instead of rounding your back a little bit, I want you to think about lifting it up. Keep the foot in flexion, and just move and rotate the hip a little bit. So kind of see what's going on with the hip. And this can have a lot to do with how easy it is for me to come into my A angle pose. So move the hip a little back and forth. Now I'm going to round the back. So I'm going to get that hollow shape in the back, and I'm going to try to take this leg and Press it over like I'm just taking a sack on top of my shoulder. Now, if it doesn't come to the shoulder, it just comes to the arm. That's okay. Remember, we just need to get it behind the back of the tricep, so or right to the back of the tricep behind the elbow. So if you can, lift that leg up a little bit and place the hand down. And as you push the hand down, we want to take it back to where we did for low lasana. So we want those hands to be back towards where the hips are. Now, I'm going to hold here, and I'm going to use my left hand. See if you can grab on and just start to straighten this right leg. And if it doesn't straighten, don't worry about it. You can also take the hand out a little bit wider, and we can kind of move into it. And just kind of pushing a little back and forth, finding where the leg is extending today. Now, if you can, bring the hand in a little closer, and I'm going to start extending this left leg in. So start to bend the left leg. Straighten out and push the elbow in by your side. So squeezing the arm in really tight. See if you can rotate and maybe gaze up towards the ceiling. When you're ready, relaxing into the leg. And again, it's staying up here and I'm squeezing in, but I'm also using the action of the leg. So this leg is squeezing in this whole time. This right arm is going to stay down and I'm going to hook the toes. Now, I'm doing the same thing. My hands are in my chaturanga arms, and I'm going to squeeze the legs really tight. So as I squeeze, it's going to lift my bottom, and you can kind of push the bottom back, and then allow yourself to come down. When you're ready, pushing yourself back up, releasing the legs, and bring the bottom down. All right. So same thing on the other side. So, Take and extend the right leg. Let's grab onto the left. Move this leg a little back and forth. 
and just start to rotate into the hip. Drag the belly button in and lifting up a little higher. Now you can start to get a little bit smaller and see if you can bring the leg up. And again, you want to kind of bring the leg up like you're hoisting a sack over your shoulder. And it should kind of have that feeling or that action. Bring the hand back and you're going to squeeze the leg in. So as I'm squeezing, I'm going to kind of straighten out, see if I can straighten out a little bit. If I'm not able to, feel free to take that arm, the left arm out a little bit lighter and open your chest. So instead of my chest facing forward, it's going to rotate over towards the right as I'm straightening and extending the left. Try to keep the right toes up towards the sky if you can. If that's comfortable, bring it in a little closer and take the arm back. See if you can keep extending the leg up. Open the heart, open the chest. Now I'm going to bring the right leg in, so it's going to make it a little easier. And I want you to think about hugging this leg in. So maybe letting it go for a moment and notice, just like we did in our, our angled pose, so your Parshva Konasana, hugging the shoulder and that leg together. So there's this action of them pulling in towards each other. You can feel the abdomen kick on. This time I'm going to hook and I'm going to take the right leg on top. Now I'm going to flex the feet, take the hands down, move your bottom back a little bit. So the bottom is working back from the elbows. Start to lower yourself down, straighten the legs and stay here for five, four, three, two, and one, pressing yourself up, letting the bottom come down, releasing the legs. All right, egg angle pose is not an easy variation to come into. We're gonna keep playing with this one, um, and we'll find different variations that we can come into. But I want you to come onto your back. So loading down onto your back really slowly. Take your gaze up, keep your feet where they are, and push your lower back down. Now I'm gonna stay here, pressing into the lower back, reach and extend the arms forward, and lift the shoulders, and let's find little sit-ups. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Extend your legs forward, bring your knees in, finding the and up, plant your feet down, find a forward bend. So allow your head to come down. Bend your knees, roll yourself up a vertebra at a time, staying in chair pose, reach and extend your arms up. Exhale, hands find the heart, straighten the legs. Bend the knees, find Utkatasana, so reach and extend the arms forward. Take the hands down to the heart, dive forward, tailbone left, head comes down. Bend your knees, see if you can get ribs towards thighs, and we're coming into this kind of chair variation, shoulders are back. Now let's reach and extend the arms up, lift the ribs up a little bit, and then pull the tailbone down. Lifting up a little bit more, pulling the tailbone down. One more. Lifting up a little bit more, pull the tailbone all the way down, holding here for three. And two. And one. See if the tailbone can come down, slide the legs forward a little bit, separate the feet, lower down, vertebra by vertebra. Chin in towards the chest. Head comes down for a moment, and then peel the spine up off the ground, just keeping the lower back down. Exhale, let's lift up for 10. Nine, gazing up, eight, seven. And a place I like to gaze is kind of where the ceiling and the wall meet. Five more, four, three, two, one. Keeping the lower back down, Ardha Navasana. Lower back stays down, Navasana. Pressing up, this time see if you can extend the legs. Reach the arms up and hug the lower abdomen in. Stay in here for three, two, and one. Plant the feet down. Use the hands reaching forward. Find in your chair pose. Stay down a little bit more and then inhale, coming into your stand. Stand here for a moment. Breathe in through your nose. Exhale, side it out. Nice inhale, reach and extend the arms up. Drop the shoulders and then exhale. Find your chair, sink your tailbone down. Let's bring the hands down. Raise the fingers, reach and extend the ribs up. Now, as I pull down, I want to pull the arms up. Inhale, lengthen. 
exhale. Let's bring ribs towards thighs. So take the hands back behind you. See if you can rise up under the toes for a minute. Squeeze the inner thighs together, keeping the legs active. And then bring the heels down, reach and extend the arms up. Exhale, tailbone comes down a little bit more. Inhale, the legs. Exhale, lower the tailbone. Inhale, the legs. Exhale, lower, hold here for five, four, three, two, and one. Super slow, lower. Slide the feet forward a little bit. Separate the feet, lower down the vertebra at a time. Hug, curl the body in. Keep the shoulder blades lifted. Let's find 10, nine, eight, seven. Notice every time you do this, your abdomen kicks on a lot stronger. Last five, four, three, two, one. Ardha Navasana, maybe extending those arms back for five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, Navasana. Kick the legs up, reach the shoulders back, reach the gaze up. Stay here for five, four, three, two, one. Plant the feet down. Inhale, coming up into your chair pose. Rise up into your toes. Nice, stay here, lower it down, super slow. Take the tailbone down and try to see if the tailbone will touch the heels. Core is engaged. See if the tailbone will touch. And then inhale, coming up a little bit more. Exhale, let's find three of these. If the heels come down, it's okay. Just find that focal spot. Inhale. Last one. So heels come down. We're going to separate the knees, putting those hands forward. And I just want you to find your crow pose. So upper body is really strong now. Core is really strong. Plant your hands down. Squeeze your knees in towards your arms. Reach your heart forward. And try to see, can I flatten out my back and pull your belly button down? As you're pulling your belly button down, see if you can start to lift the legs up a little bit. Curl the abdomen in towards the ribs. Keep extending and see if you can straighten out the legs. Bring the heels up as high as you can. Maybe separating the feet. Keep extending. Stay here for five. And four. Hugging and hugging and three. Two. And one. Plant the feet down. Super slow. Nice. Bottom comes down. Slide your feet forward. You know where we're going. Lower down. Take the lower abdomen all the way down as slow as you can. Keep the shoulders lifted. Last ten. Nine. Eight. Exhale up. Seven. Six. Five. We're going to stay down for it. They're going, yay. Three. Two. One. Lower your back. Feel your shoulder blades relax. Take your knees in by your side. So move your knees a little side to side. I'm going to extend the left leg long. See how the hip flexion feels. If you can, extend your right leg up towards the sky. Roll out the ankle. And then bring the ankle to the other direction. Grab onto the outside of the right foot, shin, or thigh. And see if you can bring your right knee into this variation of how happy baby. Now, as you're here, bring the left heel over towards the left side. Keep both shoulder blades plugged down and try to push your left hip down. Keep lifting up through the heart. So keep your body really active, pressing down, but keep a little buoyancy in your heart. Keep this little lift. So I'm not totally compressing into this pose. Keep the hips your heavy focus point. And then when you're ready, relax everything. Relax the toes, relax the leg. See if you can take the right foot over towards the left chest. And I'm just gonna reach it over and move the hip a little side to side. Come up just like we started with our, our Ashtakrasana. And then when you're ready, come into that number four. I'm gonna bring the right knee away from me. Keep the foot flexed and then see if you can just grab onto the back of the left leg. Allow this to stretch everything that needs to be stretched, maybe rolling out the left foot. When you're ready, left foot comes down, right foot comes down. And grab onto the left knee, start to extend and straighten out the right leg. And that left leg is going to come up towards the ceiling.
line, maybe rolling out the ankle and going the other direction. Think about holding onto that leg a little bit more, pushing that right hip down. And just breathing here. I'm going to find my hands either to the outside of the left foot, it might be the shin, it might be the thigh, but the knee is hugging towards the left armpit. And I want you to keep the leg kind of squeezing in. So it's not way out here away. The inside of my left thigh is hugging to the outside of my left rib cage. Keep both shoulder blades down and try to see, can I keep the right hip down? And pushing into this one-legged half happy baby. Now keep the hips heavy, but think about this again, buoyancy in the heart. So kind of breathing into the heart space, so almost the chest is getting a little lighter as the hips kind of get this heavier sensation, almost like the two areas of the body are slightly being pulled in opposite directions. And then allow the chest to get really heavy, allow the pose to sink down a little bit more. When you're ready, taking that left heel, keep the foot flexed and take the left heel over towards the right chest bone. And maybe moving that knee out a little bit. And then pulling it down a little and just finding those little side to side movements that feel good. When you're ready, bring that right knee so it faces up towards the ceiling. Left ankle finds the top of the right knee and just push the left knee out. Now, if this is enough, I want you to stay here. But if you are able to do a little bit more, grab onto the back of the right thigh. Try to keep the left elbow pushing into the left knee. And allow your body to really relax. And just see what's available. Sometimes we have a tendency to kind of try to push into everything. And I just want you to find this deeper pose without creating stress in your body. When you're ready, bring that right foot down, bring the left leg down. And I'm going to bring both feet out to the edges of the mat and start to move your knees a little side to side. When you're ready, grabbing onto both knees and just roll it forward and back. And then coming into your Shavasana. Allow your arms to extend out, draw the shoulder blades out and just take a moment. Allowing yourself to stay here as long as you possibly can. And keep practicing your arm balances. Um, knowing that some of these poses take years to accomplish and get done. So thank you so much for joining me in this practice today for our Ashtakrasana 8-angle pose. All right. Namaste.